Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Paul Lucas is stepping down as Deputy Premier of Queensland and will retire from politics at the next election. The Liberal National Party opposition says the news is grounds for an immediate election, but the government says that's not going to happen. Mr Lucas says now is the right time for him to leave the second most important position in the state government after four years in the job. Tomorrow will be his last day as Deputy Premier, but he will continue to serve as a minister until the election next year. I've tremendously enjoyed the honour and privilege of being a Member of Parliament and a Minister. Mr Lucas, who's 49, was recently diagnosed with epilepsy, but he says his health is not the reason for his decision. I'm retiring because uh, after 15 years I think it's time for me to move on and for renewal to take place. The opposition says Mr Lucas should have been sacked years ago for his incompetence, especially as Health Minister during the payroll debacle. Paul Lucas has been the architect of a string of failures in a failed Labor government. I don't think too many Queenslanders will be sorry to see him go today. LNP leader Campbell Newman is calling for an early election. The Deputy Premier is going to sit there and continue to draw uh, his very large salary and perks until uh, whenever the election is. With the March election drawing closer and opinion polls showing Labor at record lows, many government MPs may be starting to reconsider their future careers. I don't think uh, the opinion polls tend to make most members of parliament rethink their careers. They tend to perhaps rethink them more after an election. As for the future, Paul Lucas says he wants to devote his time to charities. Paul's made a decision that I think is uh, clearly right for him and for his family. I wish him and uh, his children well. Melanie Ricker, QUT News. The announcement of the federal government's proposed media inquiry has been met with confusion and rejection. While the government says the inquiry is necessary, the opposition has called it a political stunt and some media organisations are uncertain about what it will achieve. The federal government says the inquiry will look at the effectiveness of current media codes of practice, as well as looking at the role of technology in journalism. What this inquiry is about is ensuring that under the technological changes, the pressures that newsrooms are facing, all of you here today will understand that the, news, the pressures in the newsroom in the 24-7 media cycling are bringing about many changes. And so this is to look at what is happening at the moment and into the future as those pressures increase. The opposition has rejected the proposal. This is just a political stunt by a government that is bitter about being criticised by the media, in particular by News Limited. The Murdoch on newspaper, the Curie Mail, is concerned about the inquiry's potential outcomes. If it's regulation of, of print media, I guess that's something that um, we'd be very uh, reluctant to see because it's uh, something that uh, has not worked with any success anywhere in the world. Media analysts are also sceptical and confused about the narrow scope of the inquiry. Why have a media inquiry that is really only a, a print inquiry? It doesn't make any sense to me. The inquiry is expected to hand down its findings in February next year. Raisa Sugendi, QT News. One man has died and another has suffered serious burns in a house fire south of Brisbane overnight. Emergency services were called to the low-set duplex in Waterford West shortly before midnight to find the house well alight. A neighbour and fire crews managed to pull a 70-year-old man to safety, but a 49-year-old man was pronounced dead at the scene. The rescued man suffered second-degree burns and is in a stable condition at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. Today is National Are You OK Day, a day of action aimed at halting the rise in suicides in Australia. The campaign encourages people to reach out to others. Australia, are you OK? Today, coffee shops, online bloggers and other supporters join together in a national campaign for suicide prevention. The day is about trying to reach out to those in trouble. We're encouraging our guests to, over a cup of coffee, ask a colleague, a friend or a workmate um, if they're OK. The latest statistics show one in five Australian adults will experience depression, more than 2,000 a year will take their own lives, and for each person who commits suicide, another 30 will attempt it. After a year of devastating natural disasters, doctors and psychologists say the impacts on mental health are ongoing. The Mental Health Advisory Council say suicide rates have significantly increased this year. 
Statistics from Lifeline's 24-hour crisis centre have also shown a 68% increase in calls from four of the main flood-affected areas. Today, coffee shop staff were handing out phone cards, encouraging people to make a call and ask someone if they're OK. Online bloggers also joined in, hoping their internet presence will help the cause. It's raising awareness um, and it's, it's maybe making that little difference in someone's life. That one question can really change a life. A new free 1800 number has been set up for anyone needing help. Tess Gilferda, QUT News. More than 3,000 Qantas workers are planning to go on strike next week over a pay dispute. The airline says passengers could experience delays as a result of the strike. But unfortunately there will be some impact for passengers looking to travel with us next Tuesday. The Wallabies have made some tactical substitutions to their back line to bolster their Rugby World Cup campaign. On Saturday the Wallabies take on Ireland who are currently second in the Pool C table. Injured winger Digby Iwani is expected to be replaced by whiz kid James O'Connor in Saturday's clash against Ireland. The Irish captain isn't underestimating Australia's depth and backline ability. They're often innovators when it comes to backline play and, um, and they're you know, forward thinkers from that, re that regard. So um, a lot of, you, you do see a lot of other countries um, trying to copy and mirror some of the things that they do. And Canada were victorious against the island nation of Tonga in a tournament upset beating them 25 points to 20. A-League champions Brisbane Roar are preparing for their friendly against the Central Coast Mariners in Toowoomba this weekend. The Roar are expected to field Albanian star recruit Basart Berisha after arriving in Australia last weekend. Berisha says the prospect of playing for a quality football side is something he looks forward to. I think uh, the, the, the way that we play in Brisbane, it's uh, fantastic. You know, it's very hard and uh, it's... Uh, it's really good for a team who want to have success. The Brisbane coach has worked through a disruptive pre-season and says his squad are prepared for Saturday's clash. Fingers crossed we don't have any injuries between now and the start of the year, but uh, I think that the team we roll out round one um, will be a quality side and uh, yeah, we're quite excited by it actually. Senior players such as Enrique and Canadian recruit Issa Nakajima Farhan are expected to use their experience to encourage the young Royal squad. Postacoglu insists that the hole left by players such as Matt Mackay has been filled and is confident that the current squad is capable of another successful year. Centre-back Matt Smith has been named skipper for the game against the Mariners. And in tennis, Leighton Hewitt will meet Roger Federer in the men's singles rubber at the Davis Cup ties tomorrow. We get to watch one of the great uh, rivalries in tennis between Leighton and, and, and Roger uh, come Friday, so we're really looking forward to that. Despite Federer's 17-8 head-to-head record over Hewitt, the last time the two met on grass in 2010, Leighton was the victor. The match will be played at Sydney's Intimate Royal Golf Club. James Finlayson, QT News. Some of the world's biggest circuses have rolled into Brisbane, with acts set to wow audiences. But they're not like the traditional big tops. Today's modern circus is all about exploring the limits of human movement. <laughs> There are some familiar faces, but this circus offers much more than clowning around. The international sensation Le Grand Cirque is the biggest act in town, with 35 performers. You know, they're the best acts in the world, so it's very hard to get them all in the same place at the same time. The test of human skill and physical strength, rather than ringleaders with lions, seems to be the modern circus trend. Simon Painter says Australia is a big drawcard for popular international acts that are generally harder to secure. Say so you come to Australia and their eyes light up and they, they sign up immediately. After a gruelling international tour, the performers are excited to be here in Brisbane to lower the curtain on the final leg of their show. Homegrown Natalie Harris is one of those acts. It's great. I've spent most of my life overseas touring, so I love working at home. Just down the river, Rowley Kosinen and Petri Tuominen of Finnish group Racehorse are performing at QUT Festival Theatre at the powerhouse in their acrobatic show Petit Mal. They say circuses have changed because performers have become more imaginative, but the essence of circus entertainment remains. Circus adapting really well on this area, but still sticks on its own power of the kind of, just the amazement of kind of what people can do. The shows go on throughout September. Rebecca Oakley, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. And it was another warm sunny day for Brisbane in the southeast.
There'll be light winds in the morning, but they'll intensify later in the day. On our time-lapse sky cam, we can see that Brisbane barely had a cloud in the sky all day and any rain seemed a long way off. Around the nation tomorrow and a cold front is clipping the coast of Tasmania, meaning the state will be receiving blustery showers. It is looking warm with gusty winds in South Australia due to a trough pushing up from the south. Elsewhere across the country, there is some thick clouds covering southern parts of Western Australia and that's associated with a prefrontal trough. Otherwise, mostly clear blue skies are expected across Australia in coming days. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.